The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us for 17 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Gitsky. We begin with the officer involved shooting that took the lives of Deputy Philip Campus and a Wasco family. The Kern County Sheriff's Office has released video from that tragic day. He's an officer down behind the car up front. Control officer did two eight from on a wall. Officer down. Uh, we need medical aid to move up. Casey tried to leave no. in the truck. Yeah, they don't know the angle. Now the 14 minute video contains audio from multiple 911 calls, including multiple calls made by the gunman Jose Manuel Ramirez Jr., who sheriff's officers say shot and killed Deputy Philip Campus and wounded other deputies. Now perhaps the most chilling moment was captured by a neighbor's surveillance camera. It shows Ramirez's chasing one of his sons through a yard, then pointed a gun at the back of his son's head. That video is edited at that point. Now, sheriff's officials say the son, the son was shot immediately afterward. Video also shows the moments one of the first officers arrived on scene. Ramirez Jr. shot through the window at officers. Control on Wasco, to clear for a plate. Oh! Hey! Ramirez was later shot after climbing to the roof of his Wasco home. The shooting is one of the deadliest in Kern County history. Now, if you'd like to see the full video released, head to our website, KGET.com. Well, meantime, here at home, we continue to see a daily uptick in coronavirus cases across Kern County. Public Health reported 483 new cases today, along with five new deaths. Nearly 1,500 people in Kern have been lost to this virus since the beginning of the pandemic. By our count, at least 122 people have died since vaccines became widely available. Public Health says 98% of people hospitalized with COVID in Kern are unvaccinated. But with coronavirus spreading in our local schools, Bakersfield City School District is now keeping track of positive cases. According to BCSD, the district is now using a COVID-19 dashboard displaying the number of positive cases at all schools. The dashboard lists the number of in-person students and staff, number of confirmed cases, and what percentage of the total population that number represents. Now, if you'd like to look at the dashboard, we have a link on our website, KGET.com. Meantime, new research is shining some light on lo long COVID-19 and kids. Now, a recently published UK study found about 4% of young kids and teens had long-term COVID-19 symptoms more than a month after getting infected. Some studies have found higher rates of persisting symptoms than in the UK study, but kids are thought to be less commonly affected than adults. Fatigue, headaches, loss of smell were among the most common complaints from kids. Coughing, chest pain, and brain fog are among other long COVID symptoms and can occur even after mild infections or no symptoms at all. The rapid spread of the Delta variant has some doctors worrying about the potential for higher numbers of kids being at risk for long COVID-19. Now, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends follow-up doctor visits after children recover from an initial coronavirus vaccine or infection. Clinica Sierra Vista is now offering rapid COVID-19 testing and COVID-19 vaccinations. Call 833-278-4584 to make your appointment. But don't delay. Clinica Sierra Vista, putting patients first. Meantime, in your 17 Crime Watch, a police chase caused a major traffic jam on Highway 178 last night. Now, the chase ended on the Mount Vernon on-ramp of westbound 178 around 8.30 p.m. According to police, officers tried to stop the driver at Brundage Lane and Chester Avenue, but he took off. The chase lasted just eight minutes, with the driver clipping an SUV on the freeway, then hitting a curb. He took off on foot, but was taken into custody. Now, in your 17 court watch, a man accused of shooting and killing another man in a Delano cemetery is scheduled to appear in court today. 18-year-old Ray Anthony Torres is accused of killing Joel Santos Moldando at the Kern North Kern Cemetery on the evening of February 5th. Police say physical evidence left at the scene and surveillance video helped them identify Torres as the suspect. After the killing, Torres fled to Ohio where police monitored his whereabouts until evidence processed for DNA linked him to the crime. Once an arrest warrant was issued, detectives flew to Ohio and took Torres into custody with assistance from the Columbus Police Department SWAT team. He is due in court today at 3 p.m. 
Well, Houchin Community Blood Bank continues to struggle through the ongoing blood supply shortage hospitals are facing across the country. In a bid to increase blood supply, Houchin has joined a first in the nation program known as the Blood Emergency Readiness Corps, or BERC. BERC is made of seven blood centers from five states that have committed to collecting extra blood donations on an on-call schedule. Any blood units they collect will be stored specifically for emergency use cases such as natural disasters or mass shootings. Amid the COVID-19 pandemic, Houchin says blood centers across the country have been facing severe shortages that have strained what it calls the national safety net. As always, if you want to donate blood, you can schedule an appointment at hcbb.com. And to Hatch residents will have a chance to roll up their sleeves later this month. A blood drive will be held September 21st at Tehachapi Valley Recreation and Parks District's West Park. It's happening from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. at 490 West D Street. To reserve a donation time, just head to our website, kget.com. Walk-ins are also welcome. Taking a look ahead now, our local firefighters are hosting two 9-11 remembrance ceremonies on Saturday. The ceremonies are open to everyone and are happening at Firehouse 15 on Buena Vista Road. The first is set for 9.30 a.m., followed by an evening ceremony at 7 p.m. If you can't attend in person, the fire department will live stream the events. You can watch that on their Facebook page as well as on the KGT Facebook page. And be sure to tune in to 17 News this Saturday as we take a look back on the tragic events of September 11, 2001 and how it impacted us here at home. The hour-long special broadcast is happening from 9 to 10 p.m. right here on TV 17. 17 News is your local election headquarters, and as the recall election of Governor Gavin Newsom heats up, candidates looking to take his place are full steam ahead, including Larry Elder, who is making a stop right here in Bakersfield today. 17's Chris Burton is live at his rally and has more. Chris, what can you tell us? Thank you, Nicole. I'm here at Jastro Park, where in just a few short moments, Republican candidate for governor Larry Elder will be speaking to a crowd of more than 100. It's his third stop in Bakersfield after it comes after he joined DA Cynthia Zimmer and Carla Pearson at the Liberty Bell outside the Superior Courthouse. Elder jumped into politics as a, after a long career as a talk, conservative talk radio host. And he's won the broadest appeal of any candidate to replace Gavin Newsom. But controversial views on issues like gender equality and labor policy have drawn ire. He's looking for a warmer reception here in Kern County after his campaign was egged just yesterday in Los Angeles. With five days until the recall election, looking to make some ground up in the polls, I'm told Elder will focus on the oil and agricultural industries, appealing to two of the largest economic forces in the county. I'll have more from Jastrow Park on tonight's special edition of 17 News at 8.30. Live from Jastrow Park, Chris Burton, 17 News. Well, good news for Macy's Thanksgiving Parade lovers. The character balloons will soar over Manhattan again on November 25th. And this year, unlike last, fans can line the streets to take it all in. Now, Wednesday, Macy's making the decision that the parade will be back. 2020 celebration was a made-for-TV moment a scaled down version of a grand spectacle. 2021's parade is expected to look more like 2019's and all the years before that, there will be celebrities, floats, and of course, Santa. Organizers say they'll follow CDC guidance, so masks and social distancing are required. They also aren't going to use as many people to put on the show. At this point, they estimate 10 to 20% less, and all volunteers and staff must be vaccinated. Macy's also announced the marching bands and other special groups who participated in 2020 can do it again this year, meaning they'll finally get to hear the roar of the crowd and know what it's like to stroll down 34th Street. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nextar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.